inside Everbank Stadium here in downtown Jacksonville. Today we've got a fun AFC matchup on tap as it'll be the Miami Dolphins taking on their in-state rivals to the north, the Jacksonville Jaguars. on opposite ends of the Sunshine State. The Jags and Dolphins are underway. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The Dolphins take the field with Tua Tungavailoa, their quarterback from Alabama, at the helm. This is what this man was born for, the big spotlight on the national stage like this. Really, his entire career has demonstrated incredible poise no matter what type of situation his team was in. No situation is too big for him, and you can tell in the way that he takes the field. His self-belief is evident, and he gets the job done in his mind each and every time. Now it's Tua. Open man downfield is Waddle. He's got it. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Call that a very strong gain of 24. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, Nice first down, drive keeps moving. Here's Tonga by Loa on first and 10. Another catch there for Waddle. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and that'll bring up second down. So we just called his name on the previous snap, and they go right back to him, Charles, for a second consecutive completion. Yeah, I think what we're discovering on this drive is that he feels like he has answers no matter what defense you throw up there. He reads it, finds the open spot, and is available for the completion. On the ground, this is Devon Achan. And some space to move right away as he's all the way up to the 30. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Dolphins first down. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight-ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. So first and 10 now from the 30. Oh, 
Here's Raheem Mostert, the local product from right here in Florida. And they move this all the way down to the nine. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. They've taken this opening kickoff and marched it right down the field defensively. Not much resistance. And that's the point, because my admiration is for the guys moving the ball right now. They know what they're doing. Their plan is working. But I flip it over and watch and say, OK, what are you going to do to change things up? Because if you don't, they're going to put that ball in the end zone real soon. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. Motion man is Barrios. Now he's going to get it on the jet sweep. Oh, and this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. He'll get six on the ground there, and it'll be second and goal coming up. Well, I sure wouldn't be surprised if we see more of this as this game goes on because we know they like to use their wideouts either on quick throws or on jet sweeps like what we just saw there. And to say that that one worked well, partner, that's stating the obvious. Tua sets up to pass it. He's got it. Touchdown, Dolphins. Durham Smythe from three yards out. And the Dolphins put the Knights' first points on the board as they take the early lead. Just how they wanted to start this one in the end zone on their first possession. And that just happened. How about that play right there? As you said, opening possession, setting the tone for everything. And I'm going to look forward a little bit now because everyone should be celebrating his catch in the end zone. The tight end gets a little bit of love. But if you're a receiver on the team, you should be thinking to yourself, boy, oh boy, things are going to open up the rest of the game if they have to focus on him as well. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and that makes the score 7-0. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. From the end zone, it's Dearness Johnson. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. They're led by the number one overall pick in the 2021 draft, Trevor Lawrence. The word is potential, potential, potential. Think about this guy from the time he was in high school, while the top prospects going to college, coming out of college, mentioned as a generational type quarterback. He looks the part. Tall, big arm, surveys the field, and can take off and run when under duress. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up, first and 10. At their own 22. They'll start on the ground, ETN. And he'll just plow right into a host of tacklers. Nothing there at all, and it'll be second and 10. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Here's second and 10. Now Lawrence. Caught by Jones. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Good work after the catch. Gets him 15 and a first down. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so our offense has to be ready each and every time to either equal or try and get us ahead and try and keep us ahead. This is their chance to respond to that first touchdown given up. On first and 10, it's ETN. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. 
That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it, and be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. On second down, Lawrence. They'll try and set up the screen to ETN. They follow up the gain of five by only getting one there on second down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. Third and four. Let's go, let's bring it. Let's bring it. Lawrence. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man to play. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 43. The drive stays intact with a pickup of 13. Plenty of things to talk about here, partner, but to me, their defense gave up a touchdown on the first drive. How about how they're responding, coming back? That's a big third down pickup to keep their drive alive. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 43. Now Lawrence, man open, that's Calvin Ridley. Calling a gain of six on the play, and it's second down. But yet another completion here on this opening drive, and he's now perfect four of four to start. Pretty solid execution here. And how about how everyone's handled their nerves? Because you know what it's like to start a ball game. You're so amped up and ready to go that sometimes the execution isn't there. They've been flawless so far. Well drilled, well prepared, and excited to start this game. Give them 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. Straight ahead, ETN. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. They suspected it. it was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. Second down and eight. ETN once more. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Now third down is looming, a pickup of two on first down and just one yard there. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Here's third and seven. Looking to throw, Lawrence. Screenplay, here's ETN. And he'll get this to the 23, but that'll be well short of what he needed. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. So Lawrence will exit, and on comes Brandon McManus for the Jaguar field goal. This a 40-yard attempt from the left hash. The kick by McManus is good, and they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So both teams come away with points on their opening drives, and they still trail. They answered the touchdown with a field goal, but at least able to break that goose egg here early. And that is what's important, right? Because they didn't let that initial touchdown go unanswered. Took the ball themselves, moved it downfield, and put it through the post for three points. Game on. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. This taken in at the goal line. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. 
So Miami coming out for their second drive. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. And that is going to be incomplete as he let him a bit too much. He really tried to thread that down the seam. Yeah, he tried to rip that one, didn't he? But a throw with that velocity, necessary when you're trying to hit a quick hitter like that one. Timing execution has to be perfect. Unfortunately for him, that one fell to the ground. Second and ten. From the gun, it's Tua. Over the middle and complete to Waddle. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A busy first quarter. His third catch of the afternoon is a first down. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass on the first drive. It comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. Really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought yeah he might be locked in for this one and he'll manage to pick up about four it's second down and that was a quality play to start a new set of downs that was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit ball on the 47 yard line here's second and six here's Tua They'll swing this out wide. Here's HN. Just a gain of a couple there. And it brings up third and five now. That's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. Over the middle, complete. That's Hill. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 39. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Up the middle they go with Moster. And maybe a little over-pursuit there as he's able to take this down to the 25-yard line. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. His first carry of their second drive, pretty solid. And, of course, remember back to their first drive, really strong throughout that one. Not only is he getting good blocking up front, but how about his vision to find the holes? And he's seeing things before they even open and hurtling through them. Tua now on first down. A short throw there. That's to Smythe, the tight end. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. 12 more yards there and another first down. Had the offense humming on the first drive. Not much has changed here on drive number two. No, and I think a lot of times confidence just really kicks in for a team. They may have been confident going into the game, but once you prove it on a drive, it's hard to get out of that mindset, isn't it? And look, let's face it. We can always lock in on the skill position, guys. Those big fellas up front, they're really making this offense go early in the game. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Second and five from the eight. Once again, it's Mostert. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. Raheem Mostert, an eight-yard touchdown run as his guys are able to extend their lead. 
A strong, determined run there, Charles, to get in for six points. This is why it's such a team game, isn't it? And I know that sounds really generic and it sounds almost trite, but the blocks were made up front, offensive line, collective victory at the line of scrimmage and downfield. And how about the finish to the run all the way into the end zone? Extra point up and good by Sanders. And that pushes the lead up to 11. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. They go play action with Lawrence. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. Melvin Ingram dropping the hammer off the edge. Well, they certainly took too long to set up play action. That gave the pass rush time to get home for his first sack of the game. For their sake, they may start to think about the quick game and leave play action alone for a little while. Coming up now on a second and 15 following that sack. On play action, Lawrence. And that's going to be incomplete. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now Lawrence to throw. He'll get that underneath ETM. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. Able to convert on third and 14. A terrific play call. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Off the play fake, here's Lawrence. Yeah, that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. We'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one. Forced the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. Now a second and 10. Lawrence will throw. Buying time to his left. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. He turned that into a nice game. Gets him eight yards closer for third down. 
I did like his decision making there to make sure they picked up something instead of forcing a throw. Now they've got more manageable play coming up to try and pick up the first down and don't rule out the possibility that he just keeps it and runs again. After one, a 14 to three ball game. Second quarter now from Jacksonville, and it's the Jags with the football as they've got it with a third down coming up. Come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Third and two, now Lawrence. He's got his target, that's complete. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins 42. That one good for 16 and the drive will continue. Yeah, these are the types of plays they're gonna need to hit on if they're gonna get back into this game. It hasn't been the greatest of first halves. But this is a nice throw here on third down, and they keep the drive going. So they go from one 42-yard line to the other as they come up now first and 10. Play action. It's Lawrence. Got a man. It's caught inside the 10. And they move this all the way down to the nine. 33 yards that time. And that might be exactly where they needed to wake up this home crowd. They haven't given them much to cheer for so far. And never underestimate the effect the home crowd with you can have on a game. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. Here's Lawrence to throw. Steps away to his left. And from the nine, they get this to the five yard line. They made a nice effort to stick it with a loss for that play, but it's gonna take more than that to keep him from advancing the ball. Should be an entertaining battle anytime he tucks and runs over the second half of this contest. And the ball smack dab on the five yard line. Here's second and goal. They give it off here to the tight end. And he'll take this one in for a Jags touchdown. Britton Strange, a five yard touchdown run. And the Jaguars have got it back to within a score. That's an old-fashioned death march there, partner. Took them a lot of plays, but hey, they did the job. And the defense always preaches getting off the field, making a play, and turning it back over to their own offense. Unable to do so. A long, sustained drive by the offense. On here, Brandon McManus for the point after. He's got it. That cuts the lead. It's now 14 to 10. That time, a nine-play drive. And it's finished off with a five-yard touchdown run.
After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And this will be a touchback. Barrios deciding not to bring it out. And here comes Raheem Mostert in the Miami offense. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. Two in the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 25 yard line. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. That's caught Waddle on the left side. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. They'll come up now, second and four from the 31. Throwing now is Chunga Vailoa. Completes it to the tight end, Smythe. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. <laughs> I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, Definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Two and now on first down. And a quick throw here, that's complete. So five yards here, five on the play. And that's going to bring up second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Ball placed at the 45 for second and five. From the gun, a run with Mostert. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. I think we all suspected that they were going back to him after he found the end zone on his last carry. And they kept the positive momentum going there. Another nice run by him. On first down, they go with Mostert again. 59 yards rushing for him now to this point. Consecutive positive runs for him on the last two snaps. He certainly appears to be trying to put the offense on his back and just move them down the field when his number is called. The way he's running it, I keep going back to him. This second and four. Now Tua. To the left side and intercepted. Well, this had trouble written all over from the start. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with. They're in a dime set. So everywhere he's looking, he's seeing a different color jersey. And sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted. Jacksonville set to go again offensively. The last time out, they had to march almost the full length of the field for their touchdown. So here, much easier, Charles with this better starting field position. I love your sarcasm, but I love even more your observation because look, what they did last time out, now with a shorter field, they should have a lot of confidence that they're gonna put more points up on the board. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 39 yard line. And they'll begin by running the option. Strong run, but he's corralled just beyond the 40. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. Typically on the read option play, when we talk about responsibilities, we're talking about what the quarterback has to go through. How about the inside linebacker, though? His job on this play, shadow the quarterback and hold him to a short gain. Did it to perfection. Here's Lawrence. Throw right side is going to be caught by Kirk. Jaguars on third down. 
They've been good, three for four thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. They'll run with ETN. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. Give him six yards and they do convert on third. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. First down, right back to ETN. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. After the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Back to throw. Lawrence. The Dolphins get there this time, and they bring him down. It'll go as a loss of about six, and now it brings up third. Well, they were trying to set up a screen there, but that one just too slow and developing. Yeah, too slow and developing and well read because that ends up being a bad feeling for the quarterback when he's got no blocking in front of him. His guys are just going to let defenders go, and they're coming for him. So if it's not there, you just got to throw the ball at the turf at your running back's feet. So now after the sack of Lawrence, the Jags looking at a third and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. This is caught inside the 15. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, he looked his way quite a bit in this first town, and with good reason. You can see it there. He has such a handful defensively, just too hard to keep him under wraps. It delivers a big play here for this offense. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. Looking to throw. Lawrence. And he's got his man on the out route. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. From the two now, second and goal. ETN is not going anywhere. He'll be hit and dropped for no gain at the two-yard line. This is kind of one of those in-between plays here, Charles, on third and goal from the two or the three in that area. What do you dial up? Something quick hitting. You don't have the time for something to develop slowly. It's got to be right at them if you're going to run the football. And if you're going to throw it, something quick, get it out of your hands in a hurry. Bigsby. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. That winds up being a four-yard loss and leads to fourth down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. So Lawrence will exit, and on comes Brandon McManus for the Jaguar field goal. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. The kick by McManus is good, and the lead is down to one now at 14-13. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, 
in 2021. That's what one NFL coach termed his defense. The firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Speedster Raheem Mostert in the rest of this offense out to start the drive. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys <laughs> have an innate sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 27. He'll look to Mostert to start things out. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. Now a second and two. Again, they'll run it with Moster. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. 74 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. On play action, here's Tua. That's going to be caught by Waddle. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be second down. A run with Mostert up the middle. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. That one, a first down pickup of eight. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. So in Jacksonville territory now. Here's a first and 10 at the 46. Tua going to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Hill. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it'll be second down. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. From the 41, here's second and five. Looking to pass to a, and he completes it to Wilson. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And now that sets up third and two. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route. And he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. And this is going to be incomplete. See the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Field goal would have been a decent length at 55 yards. They keep the kicking unit on the sideline. They're going for it. 
They'll try it now with Mostert. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. A solid pickup of five and a very solid fourth down conversion and defensively pure frustration. Good spot on the field to go for it. Kind of no man's land, as they call it, and it worked out. Yeah, they call it no man's land because your punter is telling you it's too short. I'm just going to punt it into the end zone. Your field goal kicker might give you a little raised eyebrow. Might be too far for the field goal, so it gives you a great chance to go for it. Personally, if you have those tendencies to be aggressive as a head coach, you kind of like this spot because it gives you the decision to go ahead and go for it when you want to anyway. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Tongue of Iloa working out of the gun. Throw right side, going to be caught here by Waddle. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. Third down and one. Back to throw here. Able to find the open man. That's complete. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. First down, Tonga Bailoa. That is caught by Waddle. Touchdown, Miami. Ten yards on the touchdown pass. And the Dolphins will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. And that lead is now seven with a chance to go to eight or more if they want to get <laughs> crazy here, which we don't expect. But I just know the way the game's being played with the analytics. There's going to be a lot more of going for two in a lot of situations, isn't there? Yeah, there's going to be. And I think their focus here, they don't want to give up anything going into the lockers on the other and just a little bit of time left on the clock. Yeah, they don't want to do anything to erase the good feeling they have right now by getting this late score in the half. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And the lead is up to eight. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Johnson won't return this, and the football will come out to the 25. The Jags going to go on offense now late in this first half. A slim deficit here in a one-possession game. Not much time left, obviously. We'll see if they can march this down the field, at least get three and take some momentum into the locker room. First and ten, it's Lawrence. And he gets this one to Ridley complete. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. to throw Lawrence 
And that one to the right side and incomplete. So many times we've seen him try to escape the pocket and do something with his legs, but in this case, the pressure was too intense and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was going to get it. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Operating from the gun, Lawrence. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. These two offenses have gone up and down the field so far in the first half. Finally, finally, I say, here's a stop on third down. So on fourth down, here's Logan Cook to punt for Jacksonville. Braxton Berrios deep for Miami. And the fair catch is made at about the 27-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And it'll be Dolphin football. And here comes Raheem Mostert in the Miami offense. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the recipe working here in the second quarter. He doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back, and that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue that trend. Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. This will be caught. It's Waddle. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Now the Dolphins will use the last of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Here's Tungabailoa on first and 10. A short throw there. That's to Smythe, the tight end. Oh, he's brought down. And remember here, no timeouts left. They got to get to the line quick. It'll be a gain of three on what should be the final play of this first half. So we've reached halftime here, and it's the visiting Dolphins taking a lead to the locker room as we now go downstate to Orlando and check in with Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everyone, to our brand-new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. It was Raheem Mostert, the veteran who did some damage in that first half. He wound up finding the end zone on a touchdown run to help give his guys the advantage here at the break. Okay, Coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. The Jaguars with work to do. They trail here as we are back underway on EA Sports. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. The Jaguars ready to get going to start quarter number three. This offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but that hasn't translated so far on the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here trailing and looking for a little momentum. Yeah, you're right about that because, you know, let's face it, in the first half, most of their focus was in the passing game, and to their credit, resulted in a healthy amount of yardage. So I would think that at halftime, they're going to anticipate that defense loosening up a little bit to try and cover the passing lanes. They've got to get the running game going, and there should be some gaps to run through now. Taking it right down Broadway. 
Inside the 20. And finally taken down at the 15. The 71 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. He had been held in check. Now he breaks that big run. Shows the explosiveness we all knew was there. All right, tell the truth now. You knew it was just a matter of time, didn't you? Time. We've seen this so many times from him. Hold him down, hold him down, and then breaks out. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. Now Lawrence. Quick hitter here, it's complete. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. And the Jaguars are going to be set up with a first and goal. He couldn't quite reach the chalk, but they'll have it at the one-yard line. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. So three plays already first and goal, and they are wasting little time. Now a handoff to Bigsby. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Tink Bigsby punching it in from a yard away. And the Jaguars have come back to make it a two-point game. Everybody in the stadium knew what they were going to do right there, CD. Three tight ends on the field, all that extra bulk, and they run it in. And you saw where that one went, right? You run it over your best blocker. I can just see the head coach right now. I want to run this one over the big boy. And they got it done. Lawrence and the Jags offense staying out there. They'll go for two here. They'll try and run it here. And he'll get into the end zone, and those two points are going to tie the game. Only had a couple of yards to gain there on the two-point conversion, and they were able to do it. And how many teams shy away from running the football in the two-point conversion? They treat two yards as if it were 20. If you're a good team running the ball, go to your strength. Go ahead and push it into the end zone. Yeah, they did. It worked. the goal line and makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23 yard line Jalen Waddle running out and that means that the Dolphins ready for another drive on offense good day for him so far here in the third quarter he's hit pay dirt once over 100 yards but hey it's the third quarter he's thinking I want more right he wants more and it just increases the confidence of his team because every play he makes that means his quarterback is really feeling good about throwing the football. Probably feels like he can't throw an incomplete pass when he throws it to him right now. Yeah, he's looked really, really sharp. Two in. The Dolphins now with a first and ten at their own 23. They'll start on the ground with Moster. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. That tackle by Trayvon Walker. Nice play. He blows that up behind the line of scrimmage. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. A run straight ahead with HM. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. 
A Miami first down on the 14-yard pickup. Pardon, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get them. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for them. Show them that you're supposed to get the football. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Tua sets up to pass it. Open man is Waddle complete. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Now they'll employ the jumbo set now on second and one. Off of play action, tug of Iloa. Short throw hauled in by Croft. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's second down and eight. From midfield, here's Tua. And he'll complete this one to Barrios. It'll go as a gain of four. And that's going to lead to a third down. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Looking to throw. Oh, this is intercepted, intended for Hill. And the return stops at the 39 yard line. I tell you, Brandon, it seems like this guy's been all over the field so far. That's his second interception of the game. And so much of playing defense in the NFL, especially when it comes to defending the pass, is all about positioning and technique. And this is fantastic work on both fronts there. The Jaguars back with it on offense. They'll have very good starting field position here as they try to break our tie. And they start first and ten. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. ETN up the middle. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. From the 35, here's second and six. Lawrence. That's caught on the left side by Kirk. And Kirk is going to have the Jaguars first down as he'll get the ball down inside the 30. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. on first down. And that's caught. Did he stay in bounds, though? He did not. Ruled incomplete. 
not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Now Lawrence. Open man, this is Brenton Strange, the tight end. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins 17 yard line. 12 yards there as they move the chains. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. Being chased out, and I think the ball's out. And this is going to kick out of bounds. Boy, a fortunate bounce or two there. They'll keep possession back inside the 10-yard line. Thankfully for the offense, a fortuitous bounce there on the fumble goes out of bounds because they're down here in the red zone. You don't want to lose one there. You don't want to lose one, and the best part, because it went out of bounds, they retain possession, still have an opportunity to put points on the board. Second and short now following the fumble. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. On second down, a run with ETN. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. We talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Buried behind the line by Christian Wilkins. They dialed up a third and one blitz defensively. It worked. Yeah, and a lot of people would think, hey, they thought pass and they guessed right. In a lot of cases, you bring the blitz just to mess up the blocking on a running play. Instead, in this situation, the run wasn't there. They just followed everything right back to the quarterback. So Lawrence will exit, and on comes Brandon McManus for the Jaguar field goal. From the left hash, this from 34. The kick by McManus is good. And with it, they'll take the lead at 24-21. So the turnover leads to points as they add three there. Yeah, what a sequence there and a nice one for them. They force the interception, put together a little drive, and then come away with three points. Nothing to it, partner. Just do it. Splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. Berrios now from his end zone. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. Speedster Raheem Mostert in the rest of this offense out to start the drive. He's had a good performance, moved the ball effectively on the ground. Of course, he has the one touchdown. And when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described, that leads to finding a way into the end zone. And now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And of course, with that comes additional yardage. Yeah, looking for additional yardage. And again, that second score here in the third quarter. Tongue of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. And off to A-Chan to begin the drive. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, check check 
They go back to the ground, this time Moster. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 97 yards for him on the ground now, as he has been terrific here this afternoon. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll stay on the ground with Mostert. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. Over the middle and complete to Waddle. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. Ten more there and another first down. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Here's Tua. Another catch there for Waddle. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that will bring up second down. It's a gain of seven. Brings up second and three at the 33 yard line. They'll send a receiver in motion to the right. And he'll get it here on the jet sweep. Oh, and this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. Six yards the pick up, and that's a first down. Well, we've seen running backs in today's NFL get involved in the passing game. Maybe it's about time more receivers like that get involved in the running game. And that is something we are seeing more and more in this league. No question about it. That wasn't the biggest of gains. But it was enough to get them a first down. And it continues to test the defense. They have to think on every play about who might end up with the ball. On first and 10, it's Mostert. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. So second and four from the 22. They run out of the shotgun with Mostert. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. This has been a good drive so far, and it's been the running game for the most part that's powered them down there. Another nice burst there, picking up a first down. Now it's first and 10, as you said, in the red zone. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Now they'll throw with Tagovailoa. And it's caught. Touchdown, Dolphins. Tyreek Hill on the touchdown pass from Tua. And the Dolphins have retaken a third quarter lead. The catch and the touchdown, they were the end result of a terrific route run by the receiver. Sanders now to add the extra point. And that will make this a four-point game. So a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays. And it ends with a touchdown pass to Tyreek Hill.
Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. You can just kind of sense the momentum turning here. It's first and ten. Looking to throw Lawrence. They'll complete this to Ingram as tight end. And yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right of the yard. He's been quiet today in the passing game, just his second catch. Yeah, and people have to come up with schemes to limit him. And, and what a lot of teams do, they'll double him, you know, use a linebacker underneath, a safety over the top. Sometimes they'll just take a corner, maybe their third corner if he's a bigger guy, and put him on a man-to-man -to, -man to try and limit his touches. Just keep mixing it up, give him different angles, different looks, like a good boxer does. And ETN going to have a Jags first down as the tackle made at the 42. But they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. On first and 10, it's ETN. And he'll be taken down after a decent gain, and that will bring us to the end of this third quarter of play. Three quarters in the books. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Jacksonville. It's Jaguar football, but a little work to do for them. They trail here as we start the fourth. Here now, second and four. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. Throw right side, caught by Ridley. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 43. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know, this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. A short throw to Ingram, and he's going to be taken down. Plus, there's a penalty flag in the backfield. They may get 15 more on top of this. But Charles, they're trying to protect this lead late. Those are the types of mistakes they could afford to go without. About the last thing you want to give them is help in completing a comeback, which is exactly what that penalty does. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense, first and 10. A shotgun snap and a give to ETN. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Now second and nine. Now Lawrence to throw. Finds his tight end, Ingram. And they'll work this down to the 15 for a pickup of four. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Play 
number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. And Lawrence will throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And the Jags are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. I'll tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. They go play action with Lawrence. Now a battle for the football. It's caught. It's a touchdown. Luke Farrell, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Jaguars answer back with a touchdown of their own to take a fourth-quarter lead. But plenty of scoring here of late, and our lead changes hands now in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they just gave up a touchdown on the other end, so they knew that with time getting short, they had to put something together here, and they were able to do so and retake the lead right back. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. So that drive goes eight plays, and it results in a touchdown for Jacksonville. Touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Oh, a dangerous return man showing it here. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. Out comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown. Their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. Two in the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at about the 32. On the ground, it's Mostert to start the drive. And he works his way forward to pick up four yards there, second down. End result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. On second down, a run by HM. And the ball is knocked out. And the Jags grab it. And to the 43. So down inside the 45 to the 43 yard line. That's where they'll take over. And a little careless there, Charles, on that carry. And it's not just having two hands on the ball, it's tucking it away. It's using your body to keep people shielded off. There's so many different things into taking care of it and having ball security. In that case, though, we didn't see it happen. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. And the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. Now 
whistles and a flag, and I believe the Dolphin got going a little early. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. Here's a toss play right to Mostert. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Foye Aluakon finding his way to the ball for a stop, a tackle for loss. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. Second down, here's Mostert again. And he'll get this up to about the 40. He was able to pick up six yards there, so that leaves him with a third and 13. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. The offense on third down tonight, they've hit two for four thus far. This is gonna be third and 13. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. And that's caught inside the 30. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. It's a big play there for Miami. 41 yards. <laughs> well, this game has certainly had no shortage of offense. Both teams have been revved up from the start. And here's yet another big play. Boy, both defense have just got to be dragging out there because they've been run ragged throughout. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. Escapes the sack. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. Opted to run for it. The decision a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. They're not out of it yet, but in order to come back, they need him to play clean football the rest of the way. He makes the correct read there, passing on challenging a blanket coverage and getting the first down with his legs instead. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. He'll look to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown, Miami. Tyreek Hill on the touchdown pass from Tua. And the Dolphins put together a fourth quarter drive to take the lead. I know we often laugh and sometimes we even exalt the guys who are great trash talkers and give us some really funny lines. But the bottom line is absolute production on the field. His second touchdown of the game and they lead. And now they'll be looking to their defense to pre And now remember all touchdowns are reviewed and in a tight game like this, they're gonna take a good long look at it. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. After you the play. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Sanders on for the extra point. And that will make this a four-point game. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it ends with a touchdown pass to Tyreek Hill.
Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. We certainly have a good one on our hands. They're trailing after that last touchdown, but now a chance for this offense to try to snag that lead right back here in the fourth quarter. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 21. They'll start by running the option to the right. Give him four yards there on the first down keeper. Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for with a defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pulled it and got good yardage himself. Running out of the gun with ETN. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Sometimes being a linebacker in the middle of the field is kind of like being a doctor on the field. you got to make the right diagnosis. Here he correctly sends his run and shoots through to make the play in the backfield. Here's third and nine. Here's Lawrence to throw. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Here's Logan Cook now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Call that a 44-yard punt, five on the return, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. Miami's offense set and ready to go. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And strong running there as he's across midfield and down to the 49. 15 yards is the pick up there and the drive starting very nicely. First down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. From the 48-yard line, here's the second and nine. Once again, it's Mostert. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, to stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. And boom, here we go. And when you throw as many interceptions as he has in this one, you definitely start getting a little hesitant to throw the ball out wide because that's prime pick six territory. 
That time, he made sure the only guy who was going to catch it was sitting in the third row. The Dolphins will send out the punter now, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And you can't do it much better than that. This ball kicks out of bounds at the four-yard line. You hate to give the ball away here in the fourth quarter while you're just holding a slim lead, but that punt, absolutely ideal. They pin them inside the five-yard line. They give their defense a really nice opportunity. Bigsby with a carry to begin the series. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. And that run there does nothing but juice up the guys who are moving the football. I mean, if you're an offensive lineman, people running it, actually the guy calling plays, you're almost jumping up and down jubilation, aren't you? Yeah, now you've got options on second down. And big time options. You might want to think about play action and try and get something cheap right here over the top. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. At this point in the second half, one mistake on a forced throw could doom your chances of a comeback, so that's the right call there to just throw that one away. The offense on third down tonight. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This time they face a third and two. They go play action now. Lawrence, uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Well, the other day they told us, well, we've got third and five or less. We have to be able to convert, and I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point, and they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. The Cook now on to punt as he gets this one away. That'll be a 41-yard punt, just one yard on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays. But it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs, keep possession of the football. To his throw, caught by his receiver, Hill. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out by a few inches. That'll be a first down. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. Two and now on first down. A short throw there. That's to Smythe, the tight end. I like the thought process. I like the design, but I think he may have waited a little too long to spot his man because if you're going to run that drag route, you've got to put it on him and let him turn up field. Instead, he waits until his receiver's too close to the sideline and they don't get the yards after the catch. From the 44-yard line, here's a second and eight. Now Tua. Oh, and Tua going to be intercepted for the third time. Picked up by Foyasade Aluakin. And what a return as he brings this all the way back down to the 20-yard line. A critical error there in a tight game of the board. All you talk about is taking care of the football, and especially with a lead here in the fourth quarter. Turning it over, now the door is open for the opposition. Just in general, when you're passing in the fourth quarter with a lead, no matter at what point, you got to be super careful. you got to be careful, and sometimes you can be so careful that you end up running yourself into an error.
throwing now. Lawrence on first down. And he will find Ridley on the left side. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14 before he's out of bounds. That'll go for a gain of seven, and that'll make it second down. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And the Jaguars are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Here's Lawrence. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. That's a pretty play there. Got in at the last second, helped force the ball free, and kept them out of the end zone. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. Straight ahead, ETN. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. Travis Etienne taking it in from seven yards away. And the Jaguars have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. Sometimes you get a first and goal and you're back near the seven, eight, nine yard line and you start thinking, maybe we'll run it here on first down to get half of what we need so maybe we can have two or three shots and going for it from closer range. So this is a bonus right here. What a great run to work his way into the end zone. Extra point from McManus is good. And that gives him a three-point lead. So that drive, four plays. And it was capped off by a Travis Etienne touchdown run. Touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. And out come the Dolphins now. We have seen a lot of points here in this quarter. For us up here in the booth, it's been fun to watch. The defensive coordinators probably scratching their heads. Yeah, they're going a little bit crazy right now. But let's face it, all of our friends who play fantasy, <laughs> they're enjoying the heck out of this show because most of them are creating and getting a bunch of points. Yeah, points certainly not at a premium here. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll look to Mostert to start things out. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. Throwing now is Tungabailoa. They complete it to Hill. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. He's been big. Two touchdowns earlier. Now he's got a first down here. And he's certainly been a huge factor in this when he's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again. He picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him? Double him, triple him, do what you have to do. But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection, it doesn't matter how many guys are in his area. He certainly looks to be in that groove right now. 
All three timeouts plus the two-minute warning. Here's first and ten. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. This one thrown underneath to Achan. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Less than two to play with just a field goal separating these two sides. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. They come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down to the wire. Second and six coming up. Throwing Tua. A short throw there. That's to Smythe, the tight end. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 32-yard line. Partner, you got to like what they're doing right there. Little by little, they're getting closer. Another good pickup. Here's first down. Now Tua. Getting this out to the flat, Mostert. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. Now that's now four completions in a row. A good bounce back following the interception last drive. Certainly not letting it affect him, that's for sure. And we all know interceptions are going to happen. So the big trick, don't let it affect you going forward. Most of the good quarterbacks, they just tell the ball boy, get that one out of the rotation, give me a fresh ball, and let's go. He's got his offense moving again. And he completes it to Barrios. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Nice, well-coached, a team that understands what's going on. They still have time to work the middle of the field as they just did there. Here we go, first and goal. Here's Tua. And he is out of bounds here. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, minicamp, and just regular season, they got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. Now second down and a few inches. Tua. And this is caught. Touchdown. And they've taken the lead here in the final minute. What a game this has been, and what a drive that was, Charles, to take the lead here late in the fourth quarter. And, partner, that's a job well done by everyone, from the players to the guys calling the plays. And if I may introduce just one downside to the mix, might be a little bit too much time left. Enough on the clock for a final last-ditch effort to try and steal this win away. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and that will make this a four-point game. So that one, an eight-play drive, it spans 75 yards, and it ends with a touchdown for the Dolphins. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And with time a factor here late, he'll just take a knee and they'll put it out to the 25. So here now, Lawrence and the Jaguars. Down by four, 55 seconds remaining. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. now Lawrence 
And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. Under 50 seconds to play. Here's second and 10. Lawrence's throw here taken in by Ingram. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. This definitely four down territory at this point, but a critical third down here. Lawrence. Oh, and that's going to sabotage their comeback plans. It is intercepted. And he will bring it back. It's a pick six and a Dolphins touchdown. An excellent play there, CD, on the pick six. And I, I think they, were they a nickel? Did they have an extra DB out there? Yeah, Brandon, I think they were in standard nickel, not the uh, Buffalo, as teams like to call it, meaning three safeties for big nickel. They just wanted to take away the quarterback's throwing lanes, and that's exactly what they did and came through with a big-time pick six. Sanders now to add the extra point. And that one pushes the lead up to 11. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Out of the end zone comes Johnson. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially. So a net gain of one there. So now the story changes. Trailing in this one now. At time, a huge factor. It's an extremely tall order in front of them, but they've got the ball with a first down. will try again after the pick six. That one tipped, and it's incomplete. What good hands there defensively. at second down. Passing lanes, tough to come by with so many defensive backs on the field here late in the game. And it's not just the number of bodies. It's their quickness and their agility that makes it tough to complete a pass. And just over 30 seconds remain. Here's second and 10 now. Now Lawrence. Able to find Jones. Able to get this all the way out close to midfield. Just what the doctor ordered on play one of this drive at crunch time. This is first and ten. Operating from the gun, Lawrence. And he gets this one to Ridley complete. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts as they get it with just 19 seconds left on the clock. First down with Lawrence. Over the middle, it's complete. 
And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. This defense walks off the field. They can do so with their heads held high. What a performance well, by, by the offense, too. I mean, really, Charles, just complete domination on both sides of the football here in this one. It certainly was, and I think both sides compete against each other all the time. You go to each other in practice, obviously your training camp, your offseason. But on game day, you both want to show your best. And I think that's what we saw from both the offense and the defense, a complete team victory. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. From Jacksonville, good night, everybody.